It would bury your ass. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I see. Maybe like that. Maybe like that. Here. There you go. This is black damage. Okay. So, yeah. baby, what do you want to talk about today? <clears throat> I don't know because I didn't think about it yet. Wow, okay, that's a huge potential. So when you're not thinking yeah. consciously, are you thinking about sex every six seconds? No. Is I have that... something I would like to talk about. Okay. Um, I feel a little bit like I'm leading the conversation, which I do sometimes because I like to talk and I'm yeah. nine yeah. years older than Jack, so I've got lots of experience about blabbering. But um, what I'd like to talk about today is how I piss Jack off a lot and we've kind of learned how to handle that in some really sexual, sexy ways that work. Mm. <laughs> ah, well, how yeah. are we going to help them if they have this pattern? So we have some pretty intense patterns that yeah, we we're do. dealing with. Yeah. When you meet your twin flame, it's not all rainbows and butterflies, as it turns out. You have to work on your shit. Even when you've worked on your shit before meeting him, you have to keep working on it. It's kind of like the rest of your life. You have to poop every day or you're not going to be healthy. And it's the same way with clearing the stuff with your twin flame. You got to shift that shit. Mm. So why don't you share like what our patterns are so they can know. Our patterns. See, I'm really boring when I don't prepare for videos. So He's really hard on himself. That's an example. He's always hard on himself and therefore he's hard on his woman. Oh. Yeah. 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 It really, really because I'm a highly sensitive woman and Jack is thicker, he has thicker skin and he's like, I'm just expressing myself and I'm like, you're making me cry. That's like really No, I actually have really thin skin. That's why I have a quick temper sometimes. Oh, so you take it out yeah. on, on the feminine because No, I don't I take it out on myself obviously. And then yeah. it, it goes into whoever's around me. And I just have And it'll hurt people when they take it personally. When they don't take it personally then it won't hurt people. So there's some people who will take things personally, and then it's just, there's other people. There's people that are. How sensitive could you not take it not. personally if someone's talking to you and they're talking mean and they're talking in a mean voice? Like I don't really do what Jack does because we have different communication styles, and I was like the quiet one in my family. He's kind of taken after his dad in a lot of ways. Yeah. Who is like a top real estate lawyer who just tells you like it is, and he's really fierce. And I love I love Jack that he's awesome, but. We've had some like gaps with our patterns from the paternal side. My maternal side was actually pretty strong and fierce, and I was I was actually really shy growing up. I didn't really have a voice, and so since Jack is younger than me, I feel confident I can have a voice. But then all of a sudden, he's rearing his his power. He's like he's shining his power, and, and his voice is opening. It's kind of terrifying. Mm. Yeah, I was I was actually very similar to you. I was very shy growing up as well, and I didn't speak my mind very much. In fact, I held most everything in, and I would only get angry with my family, like people I was closest to. Um, Which is me now, so I get that legacy. Whereas people who are uh, strangers or people I was just meeting, I'd probably come off as a really nice guy and. Probably someone who like never loses his temper because I don't know. I guess because um, I, I don't trust those people as much to, to fully open myself. So it's this really difficult process I'm going through with like anger coming up because it comes up with the the people I love the most, like Amanda and my family. And I had a long talk with my dad about it, and he he's gone through the same thing in his own life and. It's something he's been working on his whole life, and um, it's it's really difficult. Uh, you know, I wish I had thicker skin. I wish I wasn't so sensitive. I wish I didn't have a quick temper. But you know, sometimes it just gets the best of me. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm he's a redhead that. too, which makes it worse. Yeah, I I did have a really big temper when I was young, actually, Fire. on the golf course of all places. When I was playing sports, I would get super upset with myself when. I wouldn't play well, or I hit a really bad shot. I would just get super angry. And uh, so, with yeah. with women, with me, when you want to get a hole in one, you want to put your ball in my hole, and you know it's not you know it's not easy to be with a highly feminine woman. I'm very emotional. I'm very back and forth about things, and you're very like linear. So you get upset when I'm being myself in my 
highly feminine nature. My mother nature takes over. I'm feeling so good. I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. And all of a sudden Jack's like, gosh darn it, what are you doing? And I'm like, oh, I was following my bliss. Like, isn't that the best thing ever? And he's like, I don't get it. I don't understand you. So could you tell him a little bit how it is being a highly linear male, being with a highly feminine female, and how yeah. you deal with that? Huh. Well, it can be extremely frustrating at times, um, because I am a super linear person. And, He's an engineer. And I think things very logically, I always have, and um, I, uh, let's see, I didn't grow up with a lot of feminine energy in my family, and so it's kind of something that's kind of new to me, and uh, part of me just wants to reject things that don't make sense and just say, oh, that's like, just, that's the shit that doesn't make sense, like, fuck that, and then just like, live my life like super logically and just always live in the logical mind, but then, you know, it's not possible around a highly feminine, lovely lady, um, but anyways, it, it triggers the heck out of my logical mind, and um, it's process I'm still you know, dealing with. So one of the tools that we've discovered, it's really organic how we discovered it, is through shamanic sex. We experienced the other night, and we've been experiencing it in small doses, but realizing that deep down the parts of me that frustrate Jack subconsciously, because you know, we all kind of know what triggers our partner and we do it anyway, at least we don't do it intentionally, but we subconsciously know it's there. And so I kind of turn the knife sometimes by accident, but it's not really so accidental. Um, because I found out in my subconscious mind that I want to fucking drive a man crazy. And I want to make him say like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And I want him to fuck me really hard from his most painful, dark, and mean place that he's been hiding for so long because that's an aspect of his soul that he hasn't been willing to look at it and face. And while it's hot to just have an angel and it's all light, just like, oh, it's not your light. I'm a human and I got lady beast parts and they need to be loved too from all the way from the angelic down to the lady beast. And I want his man beast to love me all the way down and then up into my angel crown. I want it all. I don't just want parts of him. And so I think I've been triggering parts of Jack that I want to love in myself. Does that make sense? Wow. That's awesome to hear that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's what's been really happening between us in the bedroom is um, why have you been having such incredible sex and orgasms that are into a lot deeper is because I'm I'm actually falling in love with your, your mean man, your, your beast that I was really afraid of when I first met Jack because I, I picked him specifically, I think in my subconscious mind because he's a nice guy, he's a good boy, he grew up as a good Christian, he does the right thing, he had a really sweet, gentle, loving personality and then as I got to know him a little bit better, the layer of the onion kind of dissolved and he got a little bit intense and the red beard just like started barking at me all the time and it was like whoa I didn't sign up for this how whoa I picked a nice man so you could be nice to me <laughs> but now I realize I'm like I don't want like fake nice I want the whole story wow that's what really do you good to that? hear yeah it's the first time I've heard you say that oh. um so that's really nice to hear but sometimes I just want to be real nice to me that's my inner girl right right and it's a it's a process that I've been really afraid of actually um as well because I didn't expect I kind of forgot about that side of me because I don't, I don't like that side of me actually, and I'm learning to love and accept that side of me currently. And so it was scary. I mean, it's scary for that to come up for me too because I don't want to hurt Amanda. I don't want to hurt people that I'm close with, and I don't want to come off as a mean person. I don't like that. I, I think ultimately, like, we don't want to be judged by like by God or the Father or by our tribe as being like a shitty person, and so. It's confusing because I think ultimately we don't want to be judged by our community, by like the Father, by God, by like others in our, our subconscious as like a bad, mean person. So I, I think that it might be really confusing for you because I'm like, you're hurting me. I, I don't appreciate this. And there is a part of me that's like, if people knew about what you just said to me, that's really wrong. And, and so there is this kind of like justice energy. And, and I know in the Kabbalah, they talk about like the balance between 
justice and severe or justice or severity and compassion or mercy like you have to balance these and that creates beauty so sometimes i judge your your judgmental side really strong because you can be really judgmental i'm like you shouldn't be judging me you should be unconditionally loving so that's my feminine energy and i just want you to be so compassionate that i can just be me and you won't you won't like hurt my heart mm. so why do you hurt my heart when the best that I can. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know why. Um, I don't mean to. I don't intentionally do that. Why are you doing that? I don't know. For you to teach you how to make sure to love yourself and to love me and to love babies. My job does not be all my daddy's job. What should I do when the anger arises inside my body? What should I do? Shit out on camera or not I felt like it would be a bit of a stretch to publish that but if we do and you're watching it hopefully you took some takeaways home because it was an honor to share it if we shared it. <laughs>